Ask the doc. Am I screaming? <laughs> Ask the doctor about beer and home brewing. Episode five. Let's kick it. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. Before we jump into the first question, I have one little thing to say. Please don't subscribe to my channel. My channel sucks and you will only encourage me to put out more bad content like this one. There are so many good channels for you to go and subscribe to instead. So, with that said, should we have a beer? <laughs> Just kidding, beer is not the question, beer is the answer. So. Let's grab a beer. This is the uh, multi lager drain to glass video down below in the description. And this is the, the diamond lager version. I think this was my. Ah, no spoiler. Don't spoiler. Because I did, did like a lot of like yeast comparisons. Finally kicked the keg. Nice. Now we can brew something new again. And I got it on tape. Cheers. And that's why it's not crystal clear, because got some drags there kicked off by the kicking of the keg. Yes. <sighs> Makes totally sense. So this is the fifth episode, trying to do this a little bit casual, where I answer some of your questions from earlier videos. So if you have any questions, please comment down below. Are you having a beer also? Let me hear what you are drinking. First question, this is from uh, one of the yeast compartment videos on this beer. Is it in the shot? Now, okay, John Nyström, if I brew 30 liter batch of Pilsner lager beer and I ferment it in two kegs, 15 plus 15 liters, do I just use half and half of the yeast? Not sure, or should I, should it be more instead of using four packs of yeast in total, should I do three per cake? If you're gonna ferment it like hot under pressure at eight temperature, you can just use one pack in each keg. If you were gonna ferment it at lower temperature, I would recommend two packs per, per keg. Next question, and all of these questions are timestamped so you can jump around to your favorite question if you want. Timestamps for your pleasure. This is also from one of the split batch videos, 81. Deed hid. Sorry for destroying the name. Doctor, question. Do you count the beer times in cold crash as time to cold crash? If I'm planning to dry hop for three days, should I dry hop for three days and then cold crash or cold crash as part of the dry hop? You should dry hop and then cold crash. Don't cold crash while dry hopping. You will cold crash the hops and you will not get <sighs> get little low contact and you will not get any good results. So cold crash after the dry hopping is done. Jan Nyström, did you get two questions in here? How did you do that? Did you do a... Uh, did you do a super chat? Sneaky! What nutrients are you using for lagers and do you use oxygen boost when transferred? I'm getting the acetyl in my lagers and I do not have the patience to wait it out. I've been using energy's nutrient, the FN3404 or something called... could. Could you put the, yeah, thank you. Now I've been trying the, the new, the, the, the Brew Nutri set. You could of course use yeast nutrients from any manufacturer, or if in a pinch, you could use some yeast in the, uh, the boil. Do you use Oxygen Boost? Yes, I do, I do. I tried, I tried to make as good beer as, as possible, or at least try to make as good wort as possible for the to make it a good place for the yeast. So I use yeast nutrients, I try to pitch a lot of yeast, I also use oxygen. If you ferment under pressure and ferment a little hotter, you, should, you don't need any really time for waiting out diacetyl. But with that said, in all lagers, diacetyl is not an off flavor. Link down below to diacetyl for dummies. Yes, it's a video. This is from Torch Doctor Service. This is in Swedish. I will try to translate it. Hello, Hans. At which temperature do you condition your kegs? Well, as I don't have a, like a sp special conditioning keyser or freezer, 
fridge. I basically the the temperature I have in in my keyser right now. It's I don't know why it's so low. It's four degrees, but so it usually be around maybe eight degrees Celsius or six or something. Hi Daddel. Hey Dr. Hans. I would like to get in pressurized fermentation, but I don't want to brew big batches. More like 10 liter per batch. I love watching the fermentation, so I would like to get a firmzilla. Do you think there are any downsides to brewing 10 liters in a firmzilla that is still built to hold nearly 30 liters? Not really, because there will be a lot of uh, CO2 off gassing during fermentation. But there are smaller vessels, like the Fermenter King Junior, which is 20 liters, but I wouldn't worry about it. So use whatever vessel you want. Next question. This is from the uh, summer brew day video, I think. From Riverman, love the video. I am new to all grain brewing and I see a lot of uh, people stirring the hot break at the boil. Why did you remove it? Thanks for the content. Thank you for the question. Thanks for watching. I basically remove the, the hot break because it, it looks nasty. I don't know if this has to do with your water. Mine gets like grayish color at start and I remove it. I started removing it when I started brewing because keeping an eye on the, the boil so I don't get a boil over. If you want to stir it in, go ahead and stir it in. Professional, of course I'm a professional brewer, <laughs> sorry, but yeah, if you're doing this at a bigger scale, they wouldn't like remove it, but I like to remove it. I like to skim, but I don't think it will make any difference to be fair because all of this will, will drop out. I heard a YouTuber say that he preferred the taste of leaving the foam. That is, that's, that's to me that's just bullshit. Because that would be an extremely hard thing to do. I, I tried to make split batches here on, on my channels so I can just maybe try two different G-strains. But if you're gonna try uh, doing two different boils that means also that you have even if you do a split batch before the boil that means that you will have two different fermentation going on and the only factor there should be to skim or not to skim it doesn't make any sense to me do whatever you want i like to remove it, it gives me something to do when i'm watching for for boil overs and it looks nasty okay a big shout out to my patrons and members we do a lot of your questions behind the the scenes in weekly videos for you other don't forget to comment with your questions we maybe take that question in the next one if you haven't watched the uh, summer brew day why don't you go ahead and watch that one if else i hope to see you in the next one <sighs> dog dance out <sighs> hello